Welcome everyone to another edition of Get Your Game On, the channel dedicated to immersive gaming experiences. Today we're going to talk about VR and specifically the Vario Aero. This is the most expensive headset that you can currently buy as a consumer. So at just under $2,000, is it right for you? Well, let's talk about it. I am so excited to be sharing my thoughts and views with you guys. So first things first, I have to tell you, everybody's experience in virtual reality will be a little different based on your head shape and your eye placement. So what I'm sharing with you are my experiences with the Arrow. So it'll hopefully give you a better feel and understanding if this headset might be right for you. Now I'm gonna go ahead and throw the specifications up right here. So as you can see, got all the usual specs, you can find those online. And I'm going to share with you the most important part of that is this headset is only designed to be used with NVIDIA-based video cards. So if you have an AMD system uh, that you're running for, for video, this won't work with that. Now, I have an AMD processor with an NVIDIA video card. It's a 3080 Ti. runs perfectly. But you have to have an NVIDIA-based video card if you want to use this headset. In a nutshell, let me just say that this headset is everything that I was hoping the Vive Pro 2 was going to be. And that's a good thing, because I had a lot of expectations for that headset, and I was disappointed. So if, the, if you want to know is it awesome or not, this thing is, is basically everything I dreamed of that I was hoping the Vive Pro 2 was going to deliver. Um, as most of you know, it didn't. I sent it back. So... Also, I'm pretty sure most of you aren't looking at this as your first headset, so you're probably wondering, okay, is it a worthy upgrade to the HP G2? Now, the Reverb G2 has been my go-to headset for over a year now. I absolutely love this headset and does some amazing things. And what I can tell you is, after using the Vario Aero, it made me appreciate what the G2 can do even more. Because this little headset for about a quarter of the price, it gets you a lot of the way here to what you're trying to get to with the Vario. Now, it's a different experience. And so I think that's one of the big key things I need to touch on here. Um, we can talk about the physical changes or differences between the G2. Again, you got your specs here, so I'm not going to go into that. But, for example, the cable for the Vario Aero, it's thinner, it's more flexible, nice cable, a um, little lighter. You know, you've got all the, the future proofing and creature comforts in the Vario. For example, uh, on the spec side, the IPD range is wider. So I have a wide IPD. The G2 was never quite wide enough to fit my technical IPD range. This does. This covers me. And i got to tell you, so this headset has automatic IPD adjustment. And there's something so comforting and reassuring. When you slide this headset on, and those lenses dial into place. You hear that little motor go, and those lenses move into place, and the scene clears up and is crystal clear. It's just, it's really reassuring and comforting. You're like, I know my lenses are in the right place. I know this is the best uh, view that I can get from the IPD. So that part of it's cool. Obviously, one of the downsides to it is the audio. Uh, the HP G2 has amazing audio. This comes with some earbuds that you plug into the 3.5. So it doesn't even compare. Now the earbuds will work. We'll talk a little bit more about those when I get the audio solution that I picked. Um, but they're no, nowhere near what the HP does. Um, this thing also has a fan in it. And that fan just kind of keeps the air moving around uh, under the headset. It's not obtrusive. It's not loud. It doesn't dry your eyes out, or at least my eyes. Um, it just kind of keeps the air moving so you don't get that fogging problem on here. So that's really cool. Um, tracking is obviously different on these. This uses the cameras, uses the uh, inside-out tracking. This uses the lighthouse tracking, which for a lot of you, it might be a pro or a con. I mean, it's a pain in the butt to set up, but man, I love my lighthouse tracking. I am so thrilled that this utilizes it, and it's so nice to be back to rock solid tracking. The HP G2 has good tracking. I haven't had many problems with it, but let's say that this thing is, you know, 95% of the time it's accurate and you get those little glitches from time to time. This thing is, well, I'd have to say 99%, I guess, because nothing's ever perfect, but having the lighthouse tracking is a plus for me. Um, 
the adjustability in the headset, with the fact you can actually crank the headset down, you've got all these dials. Uh, the HP doesn't have that, so you do everything with Velcro old school. Uh, this thing, and it's funny. So watching all the, the demos and all, of, all the reviews, I always looked at this little control here, and you know this is to theoretically adjust the tilt. And I'm like, that is not, how is that going to hold? I'm like, that just looked like a gimmick to me. I'm like, that can't be. Well, let me tell you, this is solid. This is a legitimate adjustment on this headset. This will hold, um, and it adds that tiltability that I, I've never seen, I don't think, in any other headset. So uh, really well done, well engineered, and outside the box, well thought out. Now, the comfort level, I will say it's good, and what's kind of neat is these pads where your head rests, there's no backing to them, and I don't know, I doubt you can see it, but it's it's almost like having a mesh chair. Um, it's very soft behind it, and it keeps it cool, so that's a neat design. When I wear this for extended period of times, um, the biggest problem I run into is the tilt. I can't get the tilt quite far enough out to where it's not pressing on my face, so I end up with VR face all the time. I need like one more adjustment for my weird face to go out to make that ultimately comfortable, but it's not uncomfortable either. Um, I would say I could probably wear my HP longer just because it's not pushing into my face here, you know, like like this one will after an extended period of time. But it's not it's not anything. It's not a deal breaker. Uh, it's still very usable. The experience in this, I've been thinking a long time about how to describe it to you guys, and I haven't seen any other reviewers or anybody else really talk about it. And when you put this headset on, it's different. It's different than anything else, any other headset that I've tried. And what basically I found was, I was thinking about back to when I used to wear my contacts back in my younger days when we'd go clubbing and, you know, don't want glasses. If I wore my contacts for an extended period of time, like for a week or something, and got used to wearing my contacts, then whenever I'd go back to my glasses, I'd put the glasses on and the world was just a little different. It just changed the way I perceived the world. And that's basically the closest way I can describe what happens when you put this headset on. It's not bad, it's not terrible, it doesn't ruin anything, it's just different. So you've got to understand that's part of it. So, and, and the reason for that is the spheric lenses. So the G2 uses the tried and true uh, Fresnel lenses. I don't know if you can see them, but they've got the rings in there. Every headset basically uses that. The Vario is the first headset, I think, since the original PlayStation VR and the, I think, DK2 kit, the, the old Oculus DK2 kit, to use the spheric lenses. And um, the spheric lenses, I'm going to show you, basically this is a video from Vario, so they kind of show the comparison. And the spheric lenses, instead of having those ridges, they're more of a dome shape. And the advantage you get from that is you don't have any lens glare, you don't have any god rays, and it gives you nearly edge-to-edge -edge clarity on the visuals. Um, the Fresnel lenses always get blurry the farther you go out from the center. So that's the big difference with that. But again, it makes it a different experience when you put it on. You are going to contend with chromatic aberrations. And here's an example of what that looks like. They're not bad. The chromatic aberrations are there, though. You will see them. And that's simply when you have like a white light or something. It's the different colors that make up that light are bending at slightly different angles so you get this weird edging effect and again it's nothing that's terrible you just need to know that it is there and, and so the image isn't 100 percent perfect and it took me a while to figure this part out too the sweet spot on this it's a different experience trying to find the sweet spot as well so on your usual G2, you know, any headset with Fresnel lenses. You put it on and it's blurry and you got to adjust it and you play with it until you get that clear image. And from what I can tell in, in using this, it's a different process. So the sweet spot in this, it is more critical to keep the warping down. And um, when I talk about warping, we'll, we'll talk a little bit more about that. But the warping is when things are just a little distorted. And if you don't have this thing positioned correctly, the warping can be bad. So that's what threw me. I would wear this sometimes and, and I was like, wow, this is amazing. And then other times I'd slap it on, I'm like, 
wow, everything looks just weird. And I think a lot of it has to do with finding that sweet spot. And the sweet spot, again, instead of being blurry, it's everything looking not warped and also the vertical field of view. There was one time I threw this on. I'm like, where did the field of view go? And I started messing with it. And man, where this sits on your head and how it sits makes a huge difference on that vertical field of view. The warping is a little bit of a different subject. So the warping occurs at the edge of the lenses, and it's just a result of the shape of the lens. And I found trying to do some through the lens video, you can make this headset look terrible or ridiculously good based on where you position the camera. Let me show you. So none of these images are representative of what wearing the arrow is. I'm just pointing out the fact that you can get a myriad of effects depending on how you place the camera in relation to the lenses. So I spent a lot of time and I actually did finally get what I felt was a representative sample of what I call warping. Keep in mind, this is right at the edge of the lens. This is a very small part of the lens and what you see through the headset. But this is exactly what I was seeing. It just gets a little blurry out at the end, and you lose some of that uh, sharp uh, visibility. Now, prior to getting to that point on the end, it, this thing is rock solid. So imagine the best view that you have in the HP G2, uh, in the Reverb G2, like think of the best image quality when you're looking right at the center of that screen, right in the sweet spot. Now paint that throughout the lens, out 95% of the lens. So imagine that being almost all the way out of the lens, other than this little side warping issue that I'm talking about. Now when you're playing games, you rarely even notice it. You're so focused on what you're doing, it's not even a distraction. You might pick it up out of the corner of your eye a little bit, but in practice, it's it's really no effect. You kind of have to look for it to really see it. So from an experience standpoint, I'd say it's not really a factor, um, but if it's something you want to see, you can see it. So now I want to take a few minutes and talk about the distortion of the headset that you've probably heard all about. So I've got to differentiate. There's two different effects here, and so I want to clarify what I'm talking about. So the distortion is the issue that they were having in the software that was causing everything to kind of look strange on the edges from a almost a software standpoint. And... Uh, they've fixed that problem with their new experimental mode that I'm sure will go live, um, and I don't expect those issues to be a problem. If you're interested in that specific topic, Sebastian from MRTV did a great analysis. He has some through-the-lens video of it all. So I'm going to link that down below if you want to take a look. So that talks about what I call distortion in the lenses. And again, that appears to be uh, all fixed. So let's also talk about the FOV. Um, for me, now this is an original HP Reverb G2, and this is the first version of it. This isn't the new version they're sending out now. So for me, the field of view is considerably better on a horizontal field of view in this. I was so worried about that because I heard everybody talking about how eh, the field of view is not good. For me, the horizontal field of view is probably five degrees better um, than it is on this. Because this always, for me, felt like, I was looking through a tunnel. I mean, it just was so narrow. Now, if you don't wear glasses, the new version of this has a different face gasket that actually can be closer, and that may give you a field of view that's equal to this or might even be better. I don't know. I don't have that. But I'd have to wear glasses anyway, so I wouldn't be able to do it. I messed around with the mod to get closer, but I'd always have to run up and put my contacts on, and after a while, I'm just like, it's not worth it. It wasn't worth the headache to jump in and play for a few hours. So... So that's the field of view. Now, I will tell you, the field of view uh, vertically seems to be a little smaller. It's kind of hard to tell because I talked about this being like the uh, Vive Pro 2, and it shares the same kind of aspect ratio that that headset had. So the, the G2 is more round. So when you put it on, it's like you're kind of looking through a tunnel. The, uh, the Vive Pro 2 and the Varo Arrow both are more of a rectangular view. So it's wider, but it's not rounded. You, you have a definitive edge on the top, which if you get the headset position right, 
you know, it's kind of at the top of your view. You don't really notice it. Um, but it, it's definitely a different look. So again, it's just a different experience that it's not good or bad. It's just different. And, and I want you to understand that. So what you get from this aspheric lens design is you have an image that is completely clear from the middle out to 95% of the edges. And where that plays in is um, just there'll be moments where I'll be in a game and it's like, holy cow, it feels it feels like I'm looking out a window at something. Um, when I was playing Squadrons, when I came up on a Star Destroyer, it's like, wow, that looks like a Star Destroyer. And when you're in your aircraft, I can see my gauges. Everything looks really clear. But here's the thing I didn't expect that surprised the heck out of me. When I went into my racing games, it was like a whole nother experience. I could not believe it. Um, racing in the Vario Aero was the best experience as far as the dramatic not expectingness, if that's a word, that I had. And after getting out of it, I think I know why. In racing, you're constantly next to other cars and you're constantly glancing to kind of get an idea. Where am I? Uh, am I too close? Am I going to hit? So your eyes are constantly darting around looking at the environment when you're racing. In the other headsets, that's all blurry. In this thing, because it's so clear, everything looks amazing. And the, the experience for anybody doing VR racing, I will let me say this, and I and cut to the chase. If you're serious about VR sim racing, you need this headset. You there's it's no and this buts, nothing. So the disadvantage of the limited vertical uh, field of view doesn't come into effect because you're racing. You've got the expanded horizontal field of view. This headset is more perfect for sim racing than any other experience that I had. So there you go. If you're serious about sim racing, this is a no-brainer for sure. And then, you know, we've already talked about, I've got a whole video about how awesome it was in DCS. But that was the biggest thing that surprised me, uh, pleasantly surprised me about the Arrow. The colors in here are amazing. So again, reminds me of the Vibe Pro 2. Everything kept reminding me of the Vibe Pro 2 in this. And, um, you know, the colors are really, really good, but it, it also looked different there too. And the best way I came up with to describe the difference in the colors and kind of the screens are if you've ever had a monitor or even a TV and it's had a glossy finish, you've got a glossy monitor, uh, like my old HPs had the glossy uh, screens on them. And then you look at the exact same image, but you look at it on one that has like an anti-glare coating or a matte coating. Could be the same image, but because of the glossy screen, it looks different. This is like having a glossy screen. This is like looking at a glossy screen monitor, obviously without any reflections in it because you're, you know, you're in a box here. But that's kind of the view that you get from this is more of a, a, a glossy view. So that's different as well. And then we can talk about the difference in the software, which is a good thing. So on this headset, I absolutely love it and I missed this so much from my, uh, Vive Pro days. So you've got two buttons here, and these are how you access your software. Now, real quick, let me just give you a quick rundown of the process for starting a game in this. And it's not the HP's fault. It's The G2 is fine. It's Windows Mixed Reality. And Windows Mixed Reality is just a pain in the ass. So with this, you basically had to fire it up. Then you had to come over, you had to put it on so it would see you and it would turn on and then you had to do the look around calibration thing and then it would throw you into the Windows Mixed Reality, you know, cliff house and then you had to power up a controller and then you had to go and activate Steam VR in the cliff house to get into the Steam stuff and it was just a hassle and I hated that. This is amazing. This is back to how it used to be with the index. Now, it's not quite the same as your Valve other uh, experiences. So, and I'll explain that in a second, but these two buttons here are lifesavers. Half the time, I don't even have to worry about having a controller with me because on my motion platform, I've got a mouse and I've got a keyboard, so I can move the mouse around. When you put this on, you basically power it up, it pulls up a virtual desktop of your computer screen, 
and then you throw it on, let the IPD adjust, and you either use a controller to run the mouse or you use a mouse pad, whatever you do, and you just go to your game directory and you click on an icon. So it's so much easier, and I love that aspect of this. So that's, that's the interface with this. Um, we'll talk about when you pull, push this uh, button right here, what happens. So when you push this button, you get the menu, and then it will bring up this menu in front of your face, and this little dot here is controlled by your head movement. So you simply would then move your uh, head over to cover this workspace, and I'm showing you this on my desktop, so I can't really do it, but you would cover that, and then you'd click the action button on the side of the headset. And what that would do is take you out to your virtual desktop, which is going to be a copy of your desktop that you have on your monitor. And that would allow you to adjust any settings or start any other applications. And then when you're done, you would simply uh, move your head over to here and it will show you what application is running and you would just click the action button and it will take you back to your VR application that you were running previously. So really super quick, super easy. In addition to that, you have the ability to control the volume for whatever audio solution you're using. And then also you can run a eye calibration again uh, if something goes wrong with that and you need to recalibrate. And then this button right here is to adjust your virtual desktop. You can move it, you can size it, all that good stuff. And then obviously the X to cancel out if you don't want to just click the menu button itself. Now, there are a few things I'd like to see Vario add in the future. Um, either the ability to access the actual Steam software so you could get to your Steam library and launch games easier, or if that's not possible, I'd very much at least like to see them add a recenter button out here so that if you're in a sim and your view gets uh, knocked sideways or something like that, you can quickly open this menu, click the recenter button, and get right back into your sim uh, very quickly, very easily. One other thing that they may think about adding would be the ability to open a virtual keyboard. Uh, for me, it's not a problem because I've got a full keyboard on the front of the motion platform, but for other people who don't have that, I could see where needing to quickly add in a password or even just a simple key press might be pretty difficult because there's no real way to do that. So if they could add a easy, quick access virtual keyboard, I think that would be a big benefit for the users as well. So since we're talking about software, we might as well talk about the Vario Base software. Now, I'm using the 3.5 software, and I think this is one of the key parts of this whole um, experience that people are glossing over, and they shouldn't, because the performance you get out of the Vario Base software is incredible. I'm getting as good a performance, if not even possibly better performance, than I got from my G2. And I didn't change any of the settings. I didn't have to lower any of my settings down, even though the arrow has a lot higher resolution. So I don't know what Magic Vario is doing over there, but keep it up. Because it's, it's awesome. It works great. Um, the other thing that I don't think people touch on, the uh, Vario team has a development cycle on their software. They're, every eight weeks... They are pushing out a new patch for their software. It's constantly evolving. And that means the experience in the Vario era will continue to, re to evolve over time. Um, so that gives them so much control over what they can do in the headset. It doesn't conflict with anything. I don't get weird crashes from it. So just a rock solid piece of software. Let's transition now really quick to the audio solution. Um, the... Vario comes with these earbuds. So this is your audio solution that comes with it. And for earbuds, they're fine. They will work. If you watch some of my other videos, you'll show, uh, I'll show you, you know, I actually use them. Uh, I've got a video here. I'll just link it here. But I've got the audio from that um, using the microphone. It works. It's fine. It's definitely not a premium kit. This is not something you'd expect with a $2,000 headset. But you don't buy this headset for the audio solution. You're most likely going to have a solution uh, already ready to go. So what I chose is the Corsair. And this is the Corsair Virtuoso. And um, the reason I chose this, number one, it got rated really high. So the audio in it's really good. Um, also, I love the mic. Uh, the mic actually has an on-off button that's easy to get to. And so when you're in virtual reality, hitting key commands can be a pain in the butt. So having the controls on the mic and having the volume level on the side here, uh, those are all key features. Now, one thing I don't like, 
I, I'm not a big fan of the faux leather stuff. Um, you know, it's, it's fine on the Vario, but on my ears, I really hate it. And so I actually found these uh, aftermarket ear cups that are actually a velour and absolutely love them. So I'll put all this stuff in some affiliate links down in the description. If you're interested, uh, you can go to Amazon and pick them up. But I love this audio uh, solution. Now, there is a caveat here. So if you use this wirelessly, which I do, it's awesome because it's super easy. You don't have to plug anything in and you've got all your controls here. What you lose, however, by not using a 3.5 cable and plugging it into the headset, you lose some of your positional audio. If I'm sitting in my F-18 and you know the engine's after burning and making all that noise, if I turn my head like this, the engine gets louder in this ear and quieter in this ear. And then if I turn my head like this, it gets quieter in this ear and louder in this ear. So you get that positional awareness based on where the headset is. You don't get that if you're doing this wirelessly through the computer because the computer has no way to know what position that headset is looking. So the solution I came up with is um, I got this cable and I found this little company. It's called Mech Cables, and I'll have a description down below also. Um, I'll include the order that I made so you guys, you, there's so many customization options. So I'll, I'll share with you what I did to custom make this. Now these aren't cheap. Uh, this was about 30 bucks, so, you know, it's not cheap, but, you know, at what point does it not really matter? So, um, this is really cool because, basically, I can plug this in to the headset, the straight end goes straight into the headset, and that was another feature of this that I wanted, I wanted a 3.5, and then this will obviously go up and plug into the Vario. Now... The reason I wanted a custom piece instead of a straight one, I wanted to have a little springiness in case I pull the headset down. So that's why I went for a custom cable. There are just regular cables um, that you can find on Amazon. You just have to make sure the length is there. But I want to have some of this springiness so that if I pulled my headset down or anything, it would have a little give. So that's the audio solution I chose. The disadvantage to using this, you lose all your controls on the headset. So now your volume, your mic mute, all that have to be done with the key presses or through your software. You no longer can use the controls on the headset. So that's the trade-off. If you want positional audio, you have to use a 3.5. If you could care less about that and you want all your controls to stay, you can just use this wirelessly. So that's what I chose. So I want to tell you about one of my favorite experiences I've ever had in VR. And it was back in the old days when our headsets were OLED. And I'll tell you right now, I am an OLED snob. I absolutely love the OLED screens in a VR headset. But one of my favorite experiences was flying at night and everything was pitch black except for the moon and the stars and the glow of the instrument panel from the dashboard. And flying up to a major city and seeing that city's lights come out of the darkness in the distance, it was magical. That's my one big complaint about this headset and where I think Vario really dropped the ball. And it's in the black levels. Now to be clear, the black levels, whenever you're actually in a daylight scene or you know it's a full bright scene, are fine. Because the screens are so bright, you get that contrast and the blacks look very good in those scenes. But when you go to a dark scene where there isn't a lot of light, the brightness of the screen stands out like a sore thumb. And it's even worse because you can see the frame, you're in a box, you can see the pitch black of the frame and that just highlights and contrasts how bright these screens are. Now, again, these screens are capable of local dimming. I confirmed that with Vario. They said these screens are capable of local dimming and local dimming is where you take the dark parts of an image and you basically darken that area and then the bright spots are lit separately um, kind of like what OLED does and uh, they said the panels in here are capable of that but they also don't know when and if they're ever going to do that so there is hope that the actual physical screens in here could be tweaked to fix that if Vario doesn't choose to do that at the very least take a page from Pimax 
and give us the ability in the Vario base software to adjust the brightness of these screens. Uh, also, the contrast wouldn't be a terrible thing either because when you're in Elite Dangerous or a space scene or you're trying to fly at night, it's not enjoyable. Uh, major disappointment, and I hope they choose to do something about that. So, you know, it's ironic. One of the biggest advantages to the aspheric lenses is the fact you don't get glare or god rays. And the fact that this doesn't get dark enough to give you that high contrast, it basically is the same as having a, a Fresnel lens. So that being said, we come down to the question once again. Is the Arrow worth upgrading over the HP G2? Let's talk about what you get. For me, I got a wider field of view. I got nearly edge-to-edge -edge clarity on the visuals. Had the nice fan that kept me from anti-fogging. And, you know, it's also got eye tracking and all those things, but those features aren't implemented in any software yet. So I wouldn't really make my uh, purchase decision based on future things that may or may not happen. So those are the big things you get. The convenience of these buttons. Is all that worth paying the extra money for the arrow? You also get some software that they charge a lot of money to corporate companies for that you don't ever have to pay a dime extra for once you own it. For me, all those things are worth it. And for me, this was a worthy upgrade from the G2. Now, I would not use this headset for room scale or for daily VR use. I think this thing, especially if you're a racer, no brainer. If you're a flight enthusiast, it's absolutely amazing. For other things, you know what? Make the decision if you want to spend that extra money, but I can tell you I won't be using this for room scale. This will be my simulator only headset. So with all that being said, I wondered, was Vario happy with their decision to enter into the consumer marketplace? So I asked them that question. Now they obviously couldn't uh, share with me any sales figures, but they did give me a statement that they said I could share with you guys. And that quote is, the arrow has exceeded our expectations. It has been a success for us. So with that being said, there very well could be a Vario Arrow 2 sometime in the future. What would I like to see from that? Well, this headset and these lenses are begging for OLED screens. My goodness, if you put an OLED screen in here with this setup as it sits now, I don't even know how to explain it. That would be unbelievable. you got to get an ear solution on here. You've got to have audio. Um, the pain in the butt factor of having to pull the heads, headphones on and off and everything, for a premium headset, you've got to get some audio. Also, don't skimp on any microphone you want to put in here because the microphones are very important to us gamers. Um, if you don't want to develop any audio, do what HP did. Go contact Valve and just license these off-ear systems in the microphone. This is considered almost universally as the best sound for VR. Just go license it. If you guys do decide to develop it, what I would like to see, off-ear is good. Also, let's put some controls on here. I love having the controls that the old uh, Vive Pro had, where you could do the audio up and down and mute the mic, all from the headset. And where that's real important, I know you can do it in software, but when you put somebody new in VR, the audio is so important to their experience. Letting them have a pretty easy to navigate uh, up and down volume and all that really adds to their experience. So if you do decide to make your own audio solution, please put some volume controls on here that are easy for someone new to VR. So that'll just about wrap it up for the Vario Aero review. Hope you found this content entertaining and informative. If you like what we're doing here, make sure you like and subscribe. And I've also started a new Twitter handle. It's at Geigo News. So at G-Y-G-O News. And that's going to give me a way to reach out to you guys with real quick information so I don't have to make a whole YouTube video or reach you guys that way. So if you do me a favor, if you like our content, head over to Twitter and uh, follow us at Geigo News. That would help us a lot. So until next time, remember to get your game on.